Good morning, brethren. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are watching us from. And I want to welcome you back to the School of the Word. And we're so happy to have you. We're happy that you're joining us and you're studying the Word of God together with us. As we begin, let's just pause in a word of prayer and ask the Lord for His direction, His leadership, and His mercy as we look at the Word. Let's just pray together. Father, we thank and we bless you this morning. We thank you that, Lord, you are God and there is no other. All the others are the works of men's hands, but you alone are the true and the living God. We thank you, Lord, as we get an opportunity to once again look into your word, the perfect law of liberty. We thank you, Lord, that your word is life to us. Your word is spirit. As we look at your word, Lord, we ask for you to give us understanding and give us insight into your word. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray and ask. And we give you the glory to Lord. Amen and amen. Welcome once again. The last two weeks, we began looking at religion in the land of Canaan, the land Israel was going to come and possess. That's the one that we looked at in the last couple of weeks. Today we'll continue on with the same, but before we do, let's just um, take a small review of what we covered so far. We've been looking at the Old Testament, we've been looking at um, the land of the Old Testament, where the Old Testament finds itself, and we've been looking at um, the geography of the Old Testament, the history of the Old Testament, and we ended up towards the, uh, in, the, in the last two weeks looking at the religion that Israel was going to find in the promised land when they came in to conquer it and to occupy it. Last week we looked at the worship of the Asherah poles and the worship of Molech, the abomination of the Amorites. This morning we'll continue on from there and look at two other extra gods that, or worships or religions that Israel encountered when they came into the promised land. Now, before Israel, before the Hebrews entered the promised land, the Lord warned them against worshipping Canaan's gods, but Israel turned to idolatry anyway. Though God strictly warned them against the worship of the gods of the people of the land, they would occupy. Unfortunately, it wasn't long before Israel was fully involved in the worship of these foreign gods. We read in the book of um, Judges chapter 10 and verse 6, the Bible says, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served the birds and the Ashtoreths, the gods of Syria, the gods of Sidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the people of Ammon, and the gods of the Philistines. And they forsook the Lord and did not serve them, serve him. So it's part of the fact that God told them, don't worship these foreign gods. Don't even compromise when you go into this land I'm giving you. It wasn't long. Israel fell into the worship of these foreign gods. They fell into idolatry. And they embraced these foreign gods. Like we said in the last session, we looked at how they worshipped the Asherah poles and the worship of Asherah, the goddess, the goddess, and how they worshipped Molech and made their children to go through the fire. Israel embraced these various religious practices. This morning, we'll continue on. And look at two other extra gods that Israel encountered when they occupied the promised land. 
The scripture says to us in the book of Deuteronomy, we read in Deuteronomy where God says to Israel, As for the cities of these people that the Lord your God is going to give you as an inheritance, you must not allow a single living thing to survive. Instead, you must utterly destroy them. The Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, just as the Lord your God has commanded you. Otherwise, they will teach you to follow all the detestable things they do in worshipping their gods, and you will sin against the Lord your God. And in Deuteronomy 6.14, we read, As for, you shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people who are all around you. But like we saw in Judges 10.6, in spite of this specific command, the strict command, Israel went after all the foreign gods. They worshipped the gods of the Sidonians, the gods of the Syrians, the gods of the Moabites, the gods of the Philistines. Whatever gods they found in the land, Israel fell and worshipped those foreign gods. So today we'll look at an extra god. We look at the worship of Baal. Now, according to the biblical record, the worship of Baal threatened the people of Israel from the period of the judges right down to the time of the monarchy when Israel became a united kingdom under Saul, David, and Solomon. The book of 1 Kings 11.4 tells us, As Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father had been. So Solomon turned away from God in his heart. He turned away from Yahweh, in his heart. The departure was not outward. The departure was in the heart. And this is where departing from God usually starts. It starts on the inside. You may have the outward appearance. You may have all the outward practices. You may engage in all the outward functions of godliness. But if in the inside of the heart, the same practices do not exist, it means you have departed from the worship of the true God. Because the worship of God is not outward practices. It's all in our relationship with God. And it affects our heart. So Solomon turned from God in his heart. The departure was not outward, but it started inside him. In the Old Testament, the name Bar occurs in so many places. So many places we find the worship of Bar or the name Bar. It occurs in a singular form and it occurs in a plural form. You find the name Bar or you read about the Bars. For example, 1 Kings 16.32, the scripture says, Then he set up an altar for Ba, in the temple of Ba, which he built in Samaria. So King Ahab actually built a temple for Ba in Samaria. And then he went ahead and he set up an altar in that temple of Ba in Samaria, the temple which he had built. That's how serious they had departed. They even built temples to the foreign gods. 
So King Ahab built a temple for Baal in the capital city of the northern kingdom, the, land, the city of Samaria. In Judges 2, 11 we read, The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they served the Baals. So in 1 Kings 16, it's a singular form. In Judges, it's a plural form. So if you look at these various ways, let me just look at some examples. If you look at the study of the Old Testament, there are many singular forms of bar found in the scriptures. And they're always in a particular geographical location. These are basically, they were like the local denominations, the local congregations, the local churches, so to say, of bar worship that existed in the land of Israel. The long, local assemblies of Ba. We read about Ba God in the book of Joshua 11, 17. We read about Ba Hermon in the book of Second of Song of Solomon, chapter 8 and verse 11. You come across Ba Hazel in 2 Samuel 13. You read about Ba Hermon in Deuteronomy 3. There's Ba Lebanon in 2 Kings 19. Ba Mahon. In Numbers 32, Bar Pio in Numbers 25, Bar Perazim in 2 Samuel 5, Bar Shalisa in 2 Kings 4, Bar Tama in Judges 20, Bar Judah in 2 Samuel 6, and Bar Zephon in Exodus 14. There's a place in Egypt. So you see, there's all these various locations where the worship of Ba was found. So these were like the local congregations, the local assemblies, the local meeting places for the worship of Ba. That's how serious that worship had grown in the land of Canaan. And when Israel came to this land, that is what they encountered. Now the worship of Ba in the Old Testament and the cult of Ba in the Old Testament became acceptable and tolerable to the many Israelites. Many Israelites did not see anything wrong with worshipping God, Yahweh, and also taking some time to worship Ba. They didn't see anything wrong with mixing it. Just like in our age and time, we don't normally see anything wrong with uh, Mixing the worship of God with the worship of our ancestors. Or the worship of God with the worship of other foreign gods. We don't have a problem with that syncretism and mixing up. We feel it's acceptable to have both ways. But that's not what scripture teaches. And to see just how much this worship of Ba had become enshrined, within Israelite culture, there are many places you come across in the Old Testament where Israelites adopted theophoric names. Now, what's a theophoric name? A theophoric name is basically adding the name of a god to one's name. Let me give you an example. For example, we come across in the Old Testament we come across names such as Jeru Ba, Methi Ba, Meri Ba, Er Ba, Esh Ba, Ish Ba. So we've got all these names with Ba at the end of it. Now there are two various ways that you see in the Old Testament, various ways that theophoric names are used. Some Israelites adopted the name of El, God, and added it to their names, and others adopted the name of Ba, Lord or Prince, and are added to their names. For example, you know about Daniel, the one we call Daniel, Daniel, that means God is my judge. I'm sure you've come across El Aisha, Elisha, my God is salvation. You've read about Ezekiel. God will strengthen. And you've read about God's messenger, Gabriel. 
God is my strength. And the prophet draw well. Yahweh is God. So these Israelites added the theophoric name El to the names and it became one name. Daniel, Joel, Gabriel, Ezekiel, Eliel, Aisha, Elijah. Using, adding the name of God to their names. Other Israelites added the name of Ba to their names. For example, you come across the king, the first king of Israel, Saul, who had sons, Jonathan, and one of the sons of Saul was Ishba. And Ishba means man of Ba. You find that in 1 Chronicles 8.33. So Saul called his son the man of Ba, Eshba. Saul's son Jonathan had a son. He called his name Mary Ba. Ba is the advocate. You read about that in 1 Chronicles 8.34. I'm sure you all know Queen Jezebel, the wife of King Ahab. The scripture says Jezebel's father, his name was Itoba. Itoba means I am with Ba. One of King David's senior officials looked after the olive trees. His name was Ba Hanan. Bar Hanan, you read about that in 1 Chronicles 27, verse 28. Bar Hanan means Bar has been gracious. So you see how enshrined this religion had become to the Israelites. That even started adding theophoric names to their names, adopting the name of the God. When you add this name to the God, you embed this name of a God to the name, you are both invoking and displaying the protection of that deity. So when Daniel says, God is my judge, he is invoking and displaying the protection of El, God, Yahweh, El Oim, El Shaddai. He is invoking the, 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 the protection of God. When Joel says, his name is Joel, Yahweh is God. He is invoking the, the display and the protection of, Yah, of El, the God of the Israelites. El Shaddai, El Elyon. And when these other ones are adding the theophoric name of Ba to their names, they are invoking and displaying the protection of Ba to them. For instance, how can someone call his son Ba is the advocate? Jonathan, Mary Ba, Ba is the advocate. Now you all know the story. Gideon. Gideon, called by God, found threshing the wheat in a wine press underground, and God called him. With 300 men, he was able to accomplish mighty wonders, mighty feats for the kingdom of God. But when, that, when, when, when Gideon was called, he was told to destroy the, the, the altar of Ba, to cut down the Asherah poles that were nearby, use the Asherah poles for the firewood, build a new altar to God, Yahweh, and sacrifice on the new altar after destroying the altar of Ba. When the people of the, 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 the land woke up the next morning and they found the new altar, which has been used for sacrificing, and they found the Asherah pole cut down, when they did their investigations, they discovered it all pointed to Gideon. When order to take matters into their own hands and deal with Gideon, for he had displayed disrespect to their God, 
and the father of Gideon protected him, the people decided they were going to give Gideon a nickname. They called him Jerubah. Jerubah means let Ba contend with him, let Ba fight with him. He has had to display disrespect for Ba, let Ba fix him, let Ba contend with him. So Gideon was called Jerubah because he disrespected Ba. Now, who was Ba? What do we know about Ba? Two things we, we, we can see in the scripture about Ba. We know it became a very popular practice in the land. Many people worshipped Ba. Many people adopted Ba, foric names to their names. It, it became patent. But even the king himself and his son, the prince to the throne, Jonathan, all of them adopted Ba names for their children. But there are two camps. There are those who were criticizing Ba and there are those who were embracing Ba. So scripture tells us a lot about the way Ba worship was criticized in the books of Judges and Samuel. Let's just look at two examples. In Judges 2, 11 and 13, the Bible says, Then the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and served the Baal. They forsook the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who had brought them out of Egypt. They followed and worshipped various gods of the people around them. They aroused the Lord's anger because they forsook him and served Ba and the Ashtoreths. So the Israelites worshipped Ba and Ashtoreth. They forsook God. In Judges 3, verse 7, we read, The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord. They forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asherahs. So they served Ba and Ashtoreth and Ba and Asherah. So those, this criticism that was taking place with the way the Israelites had related or had handled the issue of the worship of foreign gods. 1 Samuel 7, 3 and 4 reads, Samuel said to the people, if you're really turning to the Lord with all your heart, remove from among you all the foreign gods and the images of the Ashtoreths. Give your hearts to the Lord and save only him. Then he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the Israelites removed the bars and the images of the Ashtoreths and they served only the Lord. A positive response. Verse Samuel 12, verse 10. Then they cried out to the Lord and admitted, We have sinned, for we have forsaken the Lord and have served the bars and the images of the Ashtoreths. Now deliver us from the hand of our enemies so that we may worship you. So those criticism over the worship of Ba, and there were some people who did some acts towards the worship of Ba. Some typical acts. We remember the story of Gideon in Judges 6. He broke down the altar of Ba, destroyed the image of Ba, cut down the Asherah poles, built a new altar, sacrificed his father's bull on the altar as the Lord had commanded him. The people were so upset with this sacrilegious act. They thought Gideon had insulted their God. They were ready to, they were ready to kill him for what he did. They were ready to, to crucify him. They were ready to, 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 to kill him for what he did. That's just how serious people took the worship of their idols. People do the same today. You expose their idol. You expose their false god, they are pretty upset. So it's nothing new. It happens even today. The so they took the act of Gideon of breaking down all these altars and destroying the, what the, the altars of Ba and the image of Ba and cutting down the Asherah post. They took it so seriously, they were ready to deal with him and get rid of him in the land. When they could not do it, 
they decided to hand him over to Baal. And they said, your name will now be called Jerobah. Let Baal contend with you because you broke down the altar of Baal and you broke down the image of Baal and you broke, cut down the Asherah poles. Let Baal deal with you. That's how serious they took it. You all know the story of the contest between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. Usually when you look at that, we always remember, we always think of the 450 prophets of Baal. If you read that account further, or read it much more closely, it's in 1 Kings 17 to 1 Kings 19, you'll discover Elijah did not only deal with the 450 prophets of Baal, there were also 400 prophets of Asherah. So in, in terms of statistics and probabilities, it was one against 850. 850 prophets. 450 of Ba and 400 of Asher. That's what Elijah was contending against. That contest is another example of an act that was done against the worship of Ba. 1 Kings 19. Read the story of, of King Jehu. And, one, and 2 Kings 9 to 10. Read the story of King Jehu. The one was chosen by God. God chose three people to be able to execute judgment upon the house of Ahab. He chose King Hazael of Syria, King Jehu of Israel, and Elisha the prophet. If you escape one, the other one will deal with you. You escape this one, the other one will deal with you. So these three people had to deal with the house of Ahab. Elijah was told to anoint Jehu as king of the northern kingdom. But that anointing only took place much later under the ministry of Elisha, the prophet. And Jehu had a specific assignment. He was to leave no man standing who was in alliance with Ahab and the worship of Ba. You remember what I said in the beginning? Ahab even built a temple in Samaria to bow worship to the god Ba. So Jehu was to leave no one standing who was in alliance with Ahab. And Jehu played his cards very well. First he went after the two sons of Ahab. King Aziah was ruling in the northern kingdom of Israel and King, King Jehoram in the northern kingdom of Israel and King Ahaziah in the southern kingdom of Judah. So both Ahab's sons were ruling in the two sides of Israel, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. So Jehu went for those two first, got rid of them as God had commanded, then he went for Jezebel. When Jezebel saw him coming, she taunted him. She threatened him. And King Jehu just told the eunuchs who were standing with Queen Jezebel. He just told them, throw her down through the window. And the eunuchs threw Jezebel out of the window. And the Bible says she fell and she died on the steps there. On those concrete stairs that were at the bottom of the palace. And later on, we are told, the dogs licked her blood and ate her flesh. In line with what God had prophesied. In line with what God had said through the prophet. Later on, Jehu went for the prophets. He called for a meeting with all the prophets. And he called them into the temple. They went into the temple. And then Jehu says, here we are here to sacrifice to the god Ba. But we must make sure we don't have anyone from the enemy forces. We don't have any worshippers of Yahweh in this congregation. So each one of you put on your garments. Those of you who worship Ba, wear your garments. They all put on their Ba worship garments, their garments, to, start, to, start, to stand out from anyone who did not belong to Ba. When all of them had done their first initial acts, 
King Jehu walked out of that temple, closed the door, and he told the 60 men who were there with him, time to act. And they went in and they slaughtered all those worshippers of Baal who had gathered in the temple. Literally eradicating Baal worship from the northern kingdom of Israel. 2 Kings 22, up to 23, and 2 Chronicles 34 and 35, we read the story of King Josiah, the righteous King Josiah. We are told in 2 Kings 22 verse 2, And he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, and he walked in all the ways of David his father, and he did not turn to the left or to the right. Who was Josiah? Josiah was the son of King Ammon and the grandson of King Manasseh. Both Josiah's father Ammon and his grandfather Manasseh were wicked kings in Israel. Wicked kings of Judah, both of them, Ammon and, Josiah, and Manasseh, wicked kings. But out of them came a righteous king, Josiah, a godly king. Scripture says he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Scripture says he walked in all the ways of David his father. Scripture says he did not turn to the left or to the right. He was straight. He walked with God. Are you walking with God? Are you compromising with the gods of this world? Or are you walking the straight and the narrow path? In spite of all the challenges that exist in this difficult time, are you walking straight with God? We need men like Josiah, in this age in which we live. Men who are going to walk in all the ways of the Lord. Men who are not going to turn to the right or to the left. Men who are going to do what is right in the eyes of the Lord. We need such men. In this age, in this time we live in, in these difficult times, we need men who are not going to compromise their stands for God. Josiah did not compromise. He walked in the ways of David, his father. He walked in the ways of the Lord. He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. He did not turn to the right. He did not compromise. He did not turn to the left. Josiah even raised money to rebuild the temple, to repair the temple. And then while they were repairing the temple, Hilkiah, the high priest, found the book of the law. It was read to them. The people repented. Josiah and the people committed themselves to serve the Lord. During his reign and during his reforms, the temple was cleansed of all pagan worship idols and images. Because Josiah was doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord, judgment against Judah was delayed until after Josiah had died. That's when Judah's judgment came. Because of the righteousness of one man. King Josiah. We all know Josiah died in battle at Megiddo fighting Pharaoh Necho. That's where he died and he was buried with his fathers in the city of David. But despite all these efforts that were done by Jehu and Josiah, we are told the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. You remember how God adduced Gideon. After Gideon died, we are told the children of Israel worshipped Ba-Berith and chose Ba-Berith as their God. Ba-Berith means the Lord of the Covenant. They took the Lord of the Covenant, Ba-Berith, as their new God after Gideon had done all those exploits. In spite of all these reforms, all these changes, the people still did what was evil in the eyes of the Lord. It was a vicious cycle of righteousness, repentance, going back to the worship of idols, repentance after they are attacked by the enemies, going back again when things are okay. It was a vicious cycle. In spite of all the warnings of God, for instance, in Deuteronomy 4, verse 19, 
we read, the Lord says, when you look up to the sky and you see the sun, the moon and the stars, the whole heavenly creation, you must not be seduced to worship and serve them. For the Lord your God had assigned them to all the people of the world. God created all these for the people of the world. What do we see? King Manasseh, we are told, he rebuilt the high places that his father Hezekiah had destroyed. He set up altars for Ba and made a national pole just like the king, the king Ahab of Israel had done. He bowed down to all the stars in the sky and he worshipped them. In spite of what God had said, King Manasseh, the grandfather of King Josiah the righteous God, the righteous king, worshipped Ba. He worshipped Asherah poles. He worshipped the host of heaven. In spite of what God had said, don't worship them. He still went for the worship of these heavenly hosts. King Ahaz, 2 Chronicles 28. We read when Ahaz was 20 years old, when he became king and reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. And he did not do what was right in the sight of the Lord, as his father David had done. He walked in all the ways of the kings of Israel. And he made molded images for the bars. He burnt incense in the valley of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire. According to the abominations of the nations whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burnt incense on the high places, on the hills and under every green tree. Ahaz worshipped Ba, images of Ba. Ahaz burnt incense in the valley of Hinnom. Ahaz practiced child sacrifice to the god Molech. Ahaz sacrificed and burnt incense under every green tree. He practiced Asherah worship. So King Ahaz had all these things. And of course, here and there, they, they remembered God. So the worship of Ba became such a problem in the land of Israel. It became accepted. The people of Israel were even ready to execute anyone who opposed or who challenged the worship of their Ba or who insulted their Ba. They were ready to execute him. Judges 6. People even took names of Ba, added to their names. Jeruba, Meriba, Ishba, Barhamon, Jonathan the closest friend of David even gave his own son a name after Ba, Mary Ba. King Saul, the first king of Israel, gave his son a name with Ba, Ish Ba. Many kings, Ahab, Ahaz, Ahaziah, all worshipped Ba. King Ahab even went further and built a temple to Ba in Samaria. King Ahab with his wife, Queen Jezebel, even went much further and put the prophets of Ba and the prophets of Asherah on the payroll. They supported them financially. They paid them for practicing Ba worship and Asherah worship. That's just how serious the worship of Ba was in the land. But who was Ba? What do we know about Ba? Ba is the name of a supreme god in Canaan and Phoenicia. It literally simply means Lord. Ba simply means Lord. Ba was considered a fertility to God. And people believed and worshipped God because they believed that Ba was able to produce crops and, and allow people to produce children. A God of fertility. And Ba was also worshipped as the sun God and the storm God. Ba was considered as a god with power over the rain. So all these attributes, he has got power over the rain, power over the storm. He brought rain, he brought dew, and all these things that helped with agriculture in the land of Canaan. All these attributes were tested in the contest between Elijah and the prophets of Ba. 
And how they practice their worship? Those ritual prostitution that took place between the priests and the women in the temple. Prostitution that took place as they worshiped Ba to encourage him to be more, bring more fertility to the land. They engaged in practices. And sometimes they even, they were loud screams, ecstatic cries. Sometimes they even inflicted themselves, as you see in the account of Elijah and the prophets of Ba. They cut themselves until their blood ran into their own sacrifice. But there was no answer from Ba. So Ba was a god who was all this. God of rain, God of storm, God of dew, God of fertility. All these things were his qualities that were put to the test in the contest between Elijah and the prophets of Baal. There are also some Israelites, apart from those who worshipped God, who worshipped Baal, the others who remained true worshippers of Yahweh. True Yahwists remained in the land. And those who worshipped Yahweh frowned upon and were antagonistic towards the worship of Baal. To show their, dis to show their contempt for Baal worship, the true worshippers of Baal began to look at those with um, ba theophoric names and changing that theophoric nature of the name. For example, you know, Jeruba, Meba contend with him, the nickname which was given to Gideon after his acts of sacrilege. We destroyed the, the, the altar of Ba and the image of Ba and cut down the Asherah poles. Jeruba, Meba contend with him. After Gideon's death, his son took over power. His name was Abimelech. Later on, people did not call Abimelech the son of Jeruba. They changed. Instead of Ba, they added Boshef to the name. Now, Boshef means shame. So instead of calling him Jeruba, may Ba contend with him, they called him Abimelech, the son of Jerubeshef. Jerubeshef means a contender with the shame. You read about that in 2 Samuel 11 and verse 21. Abimelech, the son of Jerubeshef. Jerubeshef, Jeruba, Megba contend with him. Jerubeshef, contender with shame. Jeremiah, when he referred to the worship of Ba, he just called it that shameful thing in Jeremiah 11. That shameful thing. In 2 Samuel, we all know the story. Jonathan had a son who was lame in his feet. His name was Mary Ba, according to 1 Chronicles 8.34. Later on, his name was changed to Mephi Boshef. Mephi Boshef means from the mouth of shame. Mary Ba, Ba is the advocate. His name was changed from Ba is the advocate to Mephi Boshef from the mouth of shame. So those who were worshipping true God, the true God Yahweh, were also active and changing people's names and calling them names after shame because they considered the worship of Ba shameful. For example, King Saul's son, Ishba, the man of Ba, they changed his name to Ishbosheth, the man of shame. So there were all those. So there was both acceptance and tolerance, and there was also animosity and anger towards Ba. So we said Ba was the god of rain, the god of dew, the god of the storm, the god of fertility. So in the encounter between God and it's prophet Elijah and the prophets of Ba, these qualities were brought into action. But before we go ahead, let's just also look at some other, uh, some other facts about this bear worship. This cult of Ba was very strong in the land. Queen Jezebel supported the, 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 the prophets of Ba. We read about that in 
in uh, First Kings 18, they actually ate at a table. So they say, Jezebel even sponsored the worship of Ba in First Kings 16. Jezebel persecuted and killed the prophets of Yahweh, First Kings 18, to the point where Elijah thought he was the only prophet remaining who escaped the murderous intents of Ahab and Jezebel. But God had to remind him, Elijah, hey, hang on, I have 700 who have not bowed. So this God, this worship of God, this, this worship of Ba, Lord Ba, was brought into contention with God's prophet, Elijah. His qualities as the God of rain, God of the storms, God of the Jew. Those are the things that are needed in the land of Canaan for, for, for the soil to be fertile, for people to grow their crops. What does God do in the contest? The first thing God does is to demonstrate that Yahweh holds the power over the rain. By withholding the rain for three and a half years, there was drought in the land. Ba could not provide the rain because Yahweh, who literally holds power over the rain, withheld the rain for three and a half years. Later on, when there was a confrontation between Elijah and the 450 prophets of Ba and the 400 prophets of Asherah out Mount Carmel, it was a showdown to demonstrate who the true Lord God in the land really is. Is it Ba? Is it Yahweh? And I said to the people, make up your mind. If Yahweh is God, worship him. If Ba is God, worship him. But make up your mind. And that mind was made up at the contest. Elijah gave them the first choice. They did their, 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 their thing. They set up their altar. They did their prophesying. They did everything. But there was no response from Ba. 1 Kings 18, 27 says in the Living Bible, about noontime, Elijah began mocking them. You'll have to shout louder than that to catch the attention of your God. Perhaps he's talking to someone. Maybe he's sitting on the toilet. Maybe he's away on a trip. Or maybe he's asleep and needs to be wakened up. So Elijah was mocking them. Because they're not getting answers from their bar. 1 Kings 18, 29 says, Midday passed, and they continued their frantic prophesying. They were even prophesying. They continued their frantic prophesying until the time for the evening sacrifice. I like the last part. But there was no response. No one answered and no one paid attention. Their bar could not respond. Their bar could not answer. Their bar did not pay any attention. Then came the time for the true prophet of God to do his part. Rebuilt the temple, 12 stones, you honor the story, set up the sacrifice, and he prayed a very simple prayer. He just said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known this day that you alone are God in Israel. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that you are the Lord God. That's in 1 Kings 18, 36 and 37. And the Bible tells us in verse 39 that God answered immediately with fire from heaven. He consumed the sacrifice. He consumed the stone. He licked up the, the, the water that was in the trenches. The evidence was so overwhelming that the people fell on their faces and they proclaimed, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. God demonstrated that He alone is God. Even in our time, which we live in, we need men and women who are going to stand for God. We need men and women who are going to stand, make, take a stand for God in these difficult times. Will you take a stand? 
where do you stand? Can God count on you? God bless you. Thank you for attending our class this morning. We'll see you again in the next class. If you have any questions or any comments, please post them on our YouTube channel and on Facebook. Please support this channel by clicking the like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel. God bless you. Shalom. Shalom. Peace be upon you. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you.